Summit KQEG and Southern Urban Sports. I'm your host, Terry Erickson. Each week, an inside look into sports, into wellness, and into fitness. Well, this is a special week because my guest is a former Bangor Cardinal outstanding student athlete, recently graduated from the University of Wisconsin Platteville. This week, Morgan Horseman. Welcome to the show, Morgan. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, a Bangor Cardinal. I remember watching you play. I refereed a lot of your games. We broadcast a few. Mm -hmm. But let's go back down the Yellow Brick Road to before you even were a Bangor Cardinal yeah. because your whole family is a, a family of athletes. I'm sure you were introduced to sports when you were very young. Oh, yes. Um, I still remember the story. Um, my mom and dad tell me um, <laughs> one time, it was, I don't know, late at night or something, and they heard some, some pounding in the basement. And at that time, we lived in a house with unfinished basements. So we had a concrete floor, and they had a basketball hoop down there for me. Um, and they didn't know what was going on, and they walked down the stairs, and there I am, probably at five years old, playing <laughs> basketball. Just, I, I fell in love with the game early on, and stuck with it. Did you play other sports when you were young too? Oh yeah, um, softball and then started volleyball middle school age so I, I was a sports freak. I love that kind of stuff and I still do. Well naturally and you still look like you could play too but <laughs> uh, it, was that kind of an expectation of your family for you to become an athlete? Um, I remember, you know, when we were younger, going to games and stuff. That's just something that we always did with my grandparents. Um, my dad played basketball. Um, my mom played softball. Um, I have an older sister who played volleyball, basketball. Um, so, yeah, it was just kind of something that we all did um, as a family, I guess. Well, and I know the Horseman family quite well. We talked before we went on the air. I know your grandparents quite well. And they, it's, so the, 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 what was nice about your playing career at the high school level, at the college level, it, the family really got involved in it and they were your lifeline, without a doubt. Oh my gosh, yes. I mean, I mentioned this before um, at our senior night stuff, but I'm so thankful um, for my parents, my grandparents, uh, my family, everyone. I mean, I think I can count on one, like, one hand the amount of games that my parents missed. Uh, one of them for my sister's college graduation. Um, and then two games when he went to New York. They didn't want to travel to New York. Um, and then um, my brother's high school basketball senior night. Those are like the only games that they ever missed my whole career. Watching, playing the game, college, college level, high school level, looking up in the stands and seeing your grandparents and your parents there, how emotional was that? And when you ended your college career, highly emotional, I'll bet. It was. It was tough for all of us. Um, that was honestly the first time I've ever seen my dad have some tears in his eyes. Um, and I, I guess I personally didn't see that, but that is one thing that my sister had said. He's like, Dad had some tears in his eyes because he knew, he knew it was coming to an end. Um, but just having them there, having them in the stands, and, and being able to just go and see them and talk to them after the game, um, I was extremely thankful for that because I know so many players who just who didn't have that support system at every game like I did, um, and I was I was lucky for that. I remember watching your sister play too. Mm -hmm. So did. Was that was that kind of a sibling rivalry at all? You're trying to match and and uh, be like big sister. Yeah, um, so I got to got to play with her for one year in high school. I was a freshman and she was a senior, so that was a really cool experience. Um, but we were about the same size, um, and so you know we played the same position. Um, but being from a small school, obviously we both got to play. Um, but there's always been a competitive edge between us. Um, she's the type of person that doesn't like to lose either, so it's always been fun. Well, you know, Merlin Jones, your coach at uh, Bangor, a good yeah. friend of mine, I talked to him recently, and I knew a lot of the statistics, which are highly impressive, uh, when you played. Uh, and being, as you entered high school, you were, you were gifted enough to play uh, as you uh, were a freshman. But here's, here's what our viewers might, uh, might not know and will be highly impressed. 1,300 points scored in your career. Uh, All-time leading scorer in the history of Bangor basketball. Mm -hmm. And uh, won conference titles uh, with you uh, as kind of the catalyst. Uh, went deep in the playoffs. Uh, you were two-time uh, year conference player of the year, all state mm -hmm. as a senior. I mean, you, you just accomplished so much. You hit 51% from the floor. You did everything, um, maybe even more than you even thought you would succeed at. 
Yes, like my my experience at Bangor was truly, um, I saw a lot of growth from my freshman to my senior year especially. Um, before, I remember watching my sister when, when she was younger and they really didn't have a lot of success, I guess you could say. Um, and so that was one thing when I came into high school is like I want to help, you know, try to change this program and help turn it around. Um, and you know, each year we just kept progressing and kept getting better and every, every year we had more wins um, and it was a lot of fun. You had a setback though in high school because you, you had an injury that uh, yep. was pretty serious. Yep. Um, so in high school, um, I actually I actually broke my wrist in high school. Um, kind of, I think I missed eight games. Um, luckily it was actually over the Christmas break so it kind of made it a little more easier. I guess I could have missed a lot more. Um, but it did set us back from um, winning a couple more of those games I feel like. Um, but it, it all turned out to be okay and everything turned out to be fine, so. You know, you, uh, you seem like, I mean, you were the catalyst, you were the captain, you were the straw that stirred the proverbial drink. You, you, there's no question about it. Your teammates looked at you, but you weren't selfish at all. You didn't look to have the, uh, the spotlight shining on yourself. Mm -hmm. And as a result, your teammates appreciated that and you had a very cohesive unit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I wasn't a big fan of having that spotlight on me. I just didn't, I didn't like that. I didn't need that. Um, I just like playing the game of basketball, simple. I loved it. I loved playing with my teammates. Um, I had good coaches and I made good friends. Um, and that's kind of what I was doing it for because I love the sport of basketball. Pick out just a couple of defining moments throughout your high school career. Um, I guess one of the big ones um, was our my final high school game um, that really kind of I guess defined you know the capabilities of me playing in college um, and probably one of the most fun games I've had the opportunity to play in um, our sectional final game um, we played in Richland Center um, we played Barneveld um, and if anybody knows Barneveld was a great team uh, prior years to that um, they had a really great coach um, and so going into that game, we had just beat um, one of our conference rivals in the sectional semifinal game, um, and we knew it was going to be a tough game. Um, they had a couple outstanding players. Um, I think they went up winning or getting second place, you know, in the state that year. Um, but that game was just so fun. Um, the atmosphere, the amount of people that were there was just crazy. Um, and you know, from a small town perspective, it was it was really cool. Well, the. Bangor's always been a special place for sports, and we've mm -hmm. talked about it here on uh, KQEG again. Morgan Horseman, our guest this week, we talked about it with your uh, uh, with your Kevin Kravak. You talked about it with mm -hmm. your football coach. Uh, we've talked about it uh, how in essentially all sports, there's a complete buy-in of uh, unparalleled commitment, similar to what you see uh, on the other side of the river with Caledonia. Yep. a lot of parallels mm -hmm. there. Really so is. what makes uh, Bangor Athletics so special? Um, it's just a thing where everybody is, is one. Everybody comes together um, and does what they need to do. I mean, you see kids in the weight room. You see kids together running. You see kids doing stuff together. Um, you know, every time I would go in the gym, you know, get in the gym um, when I was in college, you know, there'd always be a volleyball team in there or basketball kids or even just kids shooting, playing three on three, whatever it is. Um, I think just having kids that just love sports um, and having parents that support them and support the school and support the, the town, um, I think that makes a big difference. Old fashioned values mm -hmm. uh, is part of it, work ethic, oh, commitment, yes. buying in without questioning coaches or questioning mm -hmm. uh, a commitment. There's just none of that. Nope. And uh, old fashioned values, uh, is what kind of values would describe you? Um, I think hardworking is one of the things that I, I pride myself into being. I want to live up to my abilities that I have. Um, obviously I know that I was have some God-given abilities and I appreciate that. Um, so I want to use that and work hard. Um, and while I'm doing that, you know, be compassionate and be able to help others succeed as well. Um, that's things that I've always I've thought of. You know, one of the I was born uh, and lived on a farm, and mm -hmm. I've always thought that, you know, farm life teaches a lot of those. Not that yep. you can't learn them in, in city life, too. But 
you, of course, your roots are on a farm. Yep. Talk, talk about the meaning of living on a farm and how that influences your um, athletic approach. Yeah, just, just growing up, you know, they're always giving you chores and giving you stuff to do, um, and it's holding you accountable. You know, you don't get this done, you can't go do this, or it's responsibilities of you got to, you know, feed the pigs, you got to feed the cows, you got to do this, you got to mow the lawn, whatever it is, you know, as, at a younger age. Um, and just kind of doing that stuff, um, it really gets you to put in perspective of what you can do. Um, it makes you m motivated, it makes you responsible, yeah, um, it makes you manage your time, all that kind of stuff, and it really helps you grow. So you never thought to yourself in the morning when you had to get up and do chores or after practice, after games, like, God, I don't want to do all this, jeez, I'd, I'd just like to hang out with my friends or go and uh, have a pizza or go lay around. Never thought that, huh? I mean, there, there's definitely times, but that's one of those things where you know, you try to convince your brother or your sister to try to do that stuff, or if you got something going on, you know, say, oh, I'll do this for you next week if you do this for me now, or, you know, things like that. And yeah. So from the farm to college life, we're going to explore that right after these messages. With our busy lives, it's a comfort to know that we can still remember loved ones in a traditional way with a monument. Lewiston Monuments in Lewiston, Minnesota has been helping families purchase a monument for over four generations. You'll find a large selection of beautiful granite, marble, and bronze monuments, all at competitive prices. And they're a full-service company, so they also do straightening, cleaning, and repair of monuments. Stop in or call for a no-obligation consultation, or visit lewistonmonument.com for more information. You know, the thing I'm most proud of when I think about our company is the reputation that we've been able to build in this community. Our technicians have done a great job going out and performing magnificent jobs for the customer. And our customers have rewarded us with some really great reviews online. We have over 150 five-star reviews online right now. Our technicians do a great job out there and our reviews show it. We can say without hesitation, when you choose Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, you'll be glad you did. Welcome back to Seven River Sports. This week, Morgan Horseman, we're catching up with her. We can graduate graduate of University of Wisconsin, Platteville. Before we get into that college life, I need to go back to, to Merlin Jones, a good friend of mine, and he said this about you, Morgan Horseman. The impact she had on Bangor basketball uh, will live on in, in history. Her work ethic on the court uh, elevated her game, elevated Bangor basketball, and the success she had uh, put us at another level. Thank you. That was very nice of him. I'm still close with Merlin, um, and hopefully someday I'm gonna get the opportunity to coach with him. So I appreciate. Ooh, him very much. <laughs> she's sharing some possible news in the future. Yep. All right. Well, you, 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 you're all state. You must have, you must have had, saw all kinds of letters. The mailman came with a big basket of letters from colleges all over the place. Yep. You got, you have. We have two really good programs here, UWL, Viterbo, mm -hmm. and you decide to go somewhere else. Yep. Was that difficult to make that decision? Um, you know, I, at that point in time, I was the type of kid who was like, oh, I don't know if I really want to go far away, you know. Um, but my, my, I guess my final two schools um, were St. Mary's in Winona um, and then Platteville. Um, and I guess at that point in time, I knew I had a big passion for agriculture. Um, I didn't exactly know which direction I kind of wanted to head. I had thoughts about, you know, my possibly being a teacher um, because that kind of leads into coaching and stuff like that. Um, but in the end, um, I decided to go with the agriculture route um, and choose Platteville because it's a great, a great agriculture program there. So. Yeah, and so you, you, you go on to play at Platteville, and I've officiated many games at Platteville and, and had the privilege of, of uh, working her, Morgan's games. I don't know if she enjoyed the, having me as an official, but but uh, needless to say, I, I enjoyed and, and admired her way she played. Well, get your, get ready for this. Two-time uh, WIAC player, all conference, all conference uh, academically, and uh, scored a thousand points, fourth, lead, fourth leading scorer at all time at Platteville, and had a tremendous success. Had tremendous success there, and. Uh, and set the records record book there, but you had a you had a def there was a defining not so nice time when you were there because you had a significant 
setback with an injury yep. also there. Yeah, um, so my junior year, um, we were about five games into the season, um, and I had a tibial plateau fracture on my left leg, so my knee area. Um, kind of a really unique um, injury, I guess, as the doctors kind of said. Um, and at first, we were really unsure of kind of what was going on. Um, it happened in practice, and so I, you know, we didn't really know much about it. They did, you know, your normal ACL, MCL tests, and everything kind of like checked out. Um, and so my trainers were not sure exactly what was kind of going on. Um, so we went to the doctor and, you know, got your typical MRIs and x-rays and all that kind of stuff. Um, and when the MRIs came back, they, you know, kind of explained to me what kind of happened. And um, so pretty much from what I understand is that I just had, I hyperextended my knee and there was some bone-on-bone -bone contact um, and I had like a hairline fracture um, down my tibia. Um, and so <laughs> that whole process was a, a long, process. Um, I was on crutches for like two months um, and I lost all my muscle in my left leg. Um, everything was kind of set back um, and originally the doctors had kind of said you know like four or five months everything should be probably back to normal. You just got to get your strength and all that stuff. Um, so obviously I decided to take that red shirt year um, because I'd only played five games. Um, and, you know, school was starting to end and it was coming to be like April, you know, that four or five month time was about to be up and things weren't going right. I, we didn't know what was going on, you know, I was still working with my trainers. Um, I went to physical therapy at the hospital and there a couple times a week and then did my therapy in the training room um, and stuff like that. And we just weren't really sure what was happening. Um, so I decided to schedule an appointment here in the cross um, and try to, you know, try to get a second opinion on things because obviously I know I had another year to play and I wanted to do that. Um, and so we went there and kind of see what they could figure out and um, they pretty much had the same diagnosis um, but their recovery time was like eight to ten months um, which actually gave me a sigh of relief for a little bit you know because okay you know right now things aren't quite on track um, and that's okay you know and they told me that they're like it's it's going to take time but a, a, a level of uncertainty yeah for you at oh, that point oh, for sure and highly emotional because i'm sure you thought my career is over yes i i thought that i was at times i was like man i could have just played my last basketball game in november and i you know i might not have known it um but you came back and set all kinds of records and yep. and finished your career in, in uh and find shining colors uh and you graduate so here we are um, you've graduated in agriculture. Yep. And uh, what's ahead for Morgan Horseman? Um, I guess I helped. Right now I work um, in the agriculture field um, and I hope to stay in that. I, I love doing that kind of stuff. Um, and eventually, hopefully, coach some basketball, um, particularly, hopefully, in the high school level. And maybe uh, take over the farm someday, possibly? Ah, uh, it's a possibility. You never know. You never know. <laughs> I don't think mom and dad are ready to move out yet, but... <laughs> So um, all of us have uh, sort of teachable moments as athletes and mm -hmm. coaches and so on. Um, were there some teachable moments uh, in college for you? Yeah, um, I think there was probably quite a few. Um, and looking back, you look at stuff um, and going back to like my injury year, um, that was a teachable moment for me in multiple ways. Um, you know, just getting over those challenges um, but also seeing things from a different perspective, you know, sitting on the bench and watching. Um, there was a lot of teachable moments for me, you know, on things that I saw from a different perspective um, that I can improve on, you know, hopefully if I, you know, I would get back and doing stuff. Um, just in practice, in games, you know, things that I could work on, things that I saw other players doing, other successful players, um, you know, to help myself, you know, and our team get better. What's the best? piece of advice that you have ever been given and that perhaps you could share that with young players that would someday want to be a Morgan Horseman? <laughs> um, I think just, you know, when you have an opportunity, um, take, make the most out of it. Um, you know, take what you're given um, and work hard at it. Um, and d don't give up, you know, don't take shortcuts. Doesn't that kind of go along with your philosophy of life? It does. Um, my philosophy is that, you know, in life we're given, we're given so many opportunities. Um, and you know, good, bad, whatever it is, you know, take those opportunities, um, be thankful for them, um, and make the most out of them. What's your favorite saying? 
Um, so <clears throat> one of my favorite sayings, um, and this I think relates to sports, um, but it also relates to life in general. Um, it's that you know what you lack in talent um, can be made up with heart and desire and giving your 100% all the time. Did you ever walk off the court thinking maybe you didn't give your very best? Yeah, there's times where you know you you think you know when you're in the moment you think that's right. Um, you think oh yeah I did what I should have done, but then you you walk off the court and you're like oh you know maybe that person was right you know and it happens. You know a lot of players uh, have the gift that you had but they don't have the mental component to go along with that gift. Mm -hmm. They sort of self-destruct under pressure sometimes, yeah. or they're not prepared uh, because they're distracted by so many different things. I've noticed as an official and watching you play as a spectator and as a broadcaster that you have, uh, you have mastered the mental approach. Yep. Um, I think you know, having mental toughness at any level of, of sports is crucial for it um, but specifically at the college level you've got a lot of stuff to deal with you know between school and athletics and then you've got to you know try to you know please your coach and your teammates and you know university and all that stuff and so being able to handle that and, and playing in a good conference with good teams you know you have to be able to be mentally tough and be able to focus and do all that stuff if you want to succeed. You know authors talk about and sports psychologists talk about tips for becoming a, a collegiate athlete and and one of them is attitude and mm -hmm. desire is another one and coachability in other words having an appetite to learn mm -hmm. not thinking you know everything handling pressure work habits and so on what what's your biggest strength um i guess i think my biggest strength would be is that i am always open to new ideas and learning new stuff um in, in turn because i think that's what really makes you learn and what really makes you grow um, so being just open-minded about things and wanting to have that ability to learn new stuff. If I was going to talk to your teammates at Platteville and ask them to describe you in two or three words, what, what do you think they would say? Um, competitive. Um, I'd say open in multiple ways, you know, communication and being open to new stuff, um, but also caring and compassionate and wanting to help others. Bucket list. What would be something that you'd want to uh, do from now until you leave this earth? Um, there's a lot of things I'd like to do. Um, obviously, coaching is definitely on my bucket list. Um, be a head coach at the high school level is hopefully some point in time I want to get there. Um, but outside of, of basketball, I'd like to just do some traveling in the United States, do that kind of stuff, play with some family. So you'd like to coach. What, what kind of coach are you going to be? Hopefully a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you, if you're gonna, if you want, if you had a daughter and a son, and yep. what kind of coach would you want them to play for? Um, I'd say a coach that cares, a coach that you can trust, um, someone that you know has respect and that you can respect, um, and someone that just pushes you to be your best self. Yeah, and you had you had that in Merlin Jones. Yep. You had that in uh, uh, in Kelly. Yep. Uh, and her predecessor at mm -hmm. uh, Platteville, and you. You've been blessed and, and uh, to have good coaches. Yep. Well, we've been blessed to have you uh, as a guest this week here on Seven River Sports. Again, Morgan Horseman, we're catching up with her, just graduating from the University of Wisconsin. Well, thanks for being on the show. Yes, Morgan. thanks for having me. Appreciate right. it. We'll be back with some closing thoughts right after this. You know, the thing I'm most proud of when I think about our company is the reputation that we've been able to build in this community. Our technicians have done a great job going out and performing magnificent jobs for the customer. And our customers have rewarded us with some really great reviews online. We have over 150 five-star reviews online right now. Our technicians do a great job out there and our reviews show it. We can say without hesitation, when you choose Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, you'll be glad you did. When you're faced with the decision of selecting a monument to honor someone dear to you, call Lewiston Monuments for a no-obligation consultation. Lewiston Monument is a full-service monument company, serving families in Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin for over four generations. You'll find beautiful granite, marble, and bronze memorials all at competitive prices. Their experts can help you design the perfect and unique memorial. Lewiston Monument. Call today or on the web at lewistonmonument.com. Welcome back to Seven River Sports. Hope you enjoyed our interview with Morgan Horseman. 
recently graduated from the University of Wisconsin, Platteville. Well, as we know, the schedule for high school and college sports has been disrupted with the pandemic, so our schedule will be resume once that schedule is confirmed. But Seven River Sports will continue to broadcast. If you have a thought this week on Seven River Sports, I'm your host, Terry Erickson, hoping that you will have a successful, happy, healthy, and safe week ahead.